Now, I'd like to talk about NVIDIA a little bit. We're getting close to our big announcement. Um, some facts about NVIDIA. <coughs> NVIDIA has been uh, the pioneer in the stereoscopic uh, 3D industry for over six years. They've done a fantastic job. Uh, they support the majority, they work with the majority of stereoscopic 3D hardware solutions. So whether you have a virtual reality helmet, LCD shutter glasses, a monitor, more likely than not, is going to work with the, with the NVIDIA drivers. They, as I mentioned earlier, they have an estimated compatibility of about 70% of the video games in the market. We want that, we want that other 30%, but and more than that, that 70% requires special settings and so on, but at the end of the day, their, their drivers do work with the majority of games. And uh, more than that, from a, I mentioned earlier that they were one of the first to release a stereoscopic 3D programming guide. So they have made efforts to build, to, to build the industry from the game developer's point of view. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd all agree, if, if you know the name NVIDIA, they are a big supporter of stereoscopic 3D, and we are very thankful for that. Now, there, there are some challenges, though, and, and, and we have to take this into, into account. Um, First off, the stereo drivers that NVIDIA provides only work with NVIDIA cards. And this is a big challenge for us because that represents less than 30% of the GPU market. So it's, it's, like, like we're, we're, it's like a sliver of a, of a much larger market and then between the manufacturers, we only have so much to work with there as well. Um, the, as I mentioned earlier, the games require special adjustments to work properly in stereoscopic 3D. Um, now, this is important. There's limited to no post-processing support. Now, what I mean by this is this. Um, games have really come a, a long way. And I'm, in a few moments, I'm going to actually show you what games look like in stereoscopic 3D. Post-processing support refers to special effects, like a blur on the image, um, a glow to a flame, a smoothing of the image, all kinds of stuff. And unfortunately, uh, while these effects make a game look very good, actually, they make them look excellent. With the NVIDIA driver, more often than not, you have to turn all this extra, they call it eye candy, or all these extra special effects off so you can get your 3D experience. The, incidentally, the 3D experience is still better than the special effects. I always go with the 3D experience, the stereoscopic experience. Now, uh, another important point, it's kind of the sign of the times. Uh, if you've been following the CPU market, like Intel and AMD, the big thing right now is having dual-core CPUs or multi-core CPUs, which means that you have more than one processing unit in a single chip. So you, you literally have like two, three computers in a, in, in, in a single box, and, and very, very big innovation as far as processing is concerned. Unfortunately, if you have one of those computers, which is the majority of computers these days, and you're using the NVIDIA drivers, what happens is you have to shut the extra processing power off. You have to turn off those extra cores so you could play with your 3D games, and, 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 and that's a bit of a problem. Uh, limited hardware transform and lighting flexibility. I'm getting a little technical here. This has to do with the flexibility you have with adjusting the screen, uh, be it um, your point of view, lighting, and so on. Now the big announcement. I've been, uh, here we go. IZ3D are releasing, this is the first time, uh, one of the first times that a, a company has done this, is releasing their own proprietary drivers, their own software for the, for the stereoscopic market. And let's take a look, see here. Let's tell you a bit about the features of the drivers, what makes them special. First and foremost, they support post-processing effects, high dynamic range lighting, bloom lighting, all that, that, all that exciting stuff. So now, if you're playing a video game, you don't have to turn off all those special features that make a game look great. And I'm going to actually show you some of that tonight. It's very exciting. Another point is that their drivers support both NVIDIA and AMD or ATI graphics cards. This is, uh, this is about, well, I'll go into exactly how much the market is shortly, but it's, uh, I'll just give you a heads up, it's, it's about 50% of the market. So we jump from 30 to 50, which is nearly like 100% of the hardcore gamers. So we suddenly have the full market now. They support multi-core CPUs. So the, now, when, when you buy um, a computer, you don't have to cut down its processing power to be compatible with, uh, stereos with the stereoscopic technology. Uh, they are Vista compatible. Up until now, I forgot to mention that point. NVIDIA drivers to date 
do not yet support Windows, Windows Vista. The, to, to my knowledge, these are the first drivers that support Windows Vista in both DirectX 8 and DirectX 9. Now, DirectX refers to, uh, it's a 3D standard as to how the graphics card is, is reached through programming or how it's communicated with. Um, Vista supports DirectX 10, which is a big deal in the gaming industry. Um, but we're talking about 8 and 9 here. And another point, and I'll show you that as well in the demo, a reasonably accurate crosshair for most games. And what that means is this. When you play a video game, they usually call them first-person shooters. There's usually a dot in the middle of the screen. So when you're looking at a target, when you shoot your gun or your laser or your, you know, your broomstick, whatever you want, and you, you will hit the dot. Okay? However, when you're playing in a stereoscopic game, the, the 3D environment is being changed dynamically according to what your eyes need. And suddenly that dot is no longer accurate. So you'll be aiming, what you aim at will actually be like an inch or two inches to the right of what you're aiming at. NVIDIA's solution was to provide um, an alternate crosshair that's as an overlay to the game. Uh, however, with the iZ3D drivers for the majority of games, you actually don't need to do that, which is, if, if you're into video games, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate how, how big an innovation that is. And the proper hardware transform and lighting support, this means it's, again, you have that flexibility with the game that unfortunately, at least to date, hasn't been available with the NVIDIA driver. Now, uh, now come the limitations. Uh, the drivers are proprietary. They only work with IZ3D monitors. Uh, they support DirectX 8 and 9. Uh, nothing later, nothing earlier yet. It's, it's a work in progress. OpenGL, I know OpenGL is very popular in this room, but in the gaming industry, DirectX 8 is, is somewhat more popular. However, uh, OpenGL is not supported yet, but it's, uh, it's a work in progress. Now, what does this mean for the industry? Well, first, it can be done. I mean, if you read through the, the stereoscopic forums, everyone's complaining, oh, how are we going to get the post-processing effects and so on? Well, this is proof that it could be done. So there's a goal to aim for. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 50% of the GPU market or the graphics market uh, now qualifies for stereoscopic 3D. So it's a very big jump there. So nearly 100% of the hardcore gamers. There is a motivation for NVIDIA to improve their driver offering, in my opinion, rapidly. So the alternate stereoscopic 3D solutions can remain competitive. Because as I mentioned, if we looked at that, that presentation earlier, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of products on the market and they have equal rights to get the benefits of post-processing and special effects and so on. So we're very excited to see what their, what their further driver releases are like. And uh, I think most importantly, there's now hope for games to look their best. Uh, up to now, when, when I think of stereoscopic 3D technologies, I'm thinking of trade-offs. I want to get the 3D, but I got to give something up. Well, here's an opportunity to get the benefits of the 3D without giving something up. And this is, this is really where the industry is headed. And uh, last but not least, when you see the pictures tonight and you see what we have to show as far as stereoscopic is concerned, I think it will be very clear that it's very easy to make a game stereoscopic 3D compatible with some minor proper programming. And uh, let's take a look, see here. And then we're on to our demonstration. So if you could just give me just a few moments, we'll set things up and we have some exciting images for you to show, okay? Thank you so much for your patience.